Hello guys, welcome to Online Web Tutor. I am Sanjay. We are learning Laravel 8 Framework tutorial. This is our part number 17. In the last video, we had seen all about validating a form using validate method. But inside this video, we are going to do form validation using request class. And also guys, if you are looking up the blog articles of KKPHP4, CodeIgniter 4, MySQL, Node.js, then you must visit this blogging website. Inside this website, you will find different different interesting blog articles inside different different categories. Now if I back to browser, here we have the blogging website. Inside this categories drop down, these are the categories we have. Inside each of the categories, we have interesting blog articles. These are latest blog posts. As you can see, we have interesting articles. Also, we have a section of create an article. This is nothing but it's an guest post publication. If you are interested to post your article with online web tutor, just fill your author details, blog post details and submit for the approval. Once it will be approved, it will be automatically published inside this online web tutor blogging website. Back to the topic. Inside this video, we are going to create a form and validate form using request class method. If I back to editor and inside last video, this is the form we have developed which includes name, email and the mobile number. This is the section we have used to render all the errors what we have returned using validate method. If I back to controller and inside this controller, the same method we have used for the form submission. This method is used for the get request type and the post request type and here inside this we have used validate method. And one more thing inside validate method is that if we want to define our custom message so here inside this validate method simply we need to put a second array. In the first array we have the key value pairs where we have defined the name attributes as a key and in the value we have defined the form validation rules. So inside this second array if we want the custom messages of our error we need to define here. So putting double quotes or single quotes and let's say that this is the field name and this is the rule. So only we need to write here something let's say name dot required and here we have the custom message so let's say name value is needed so when we get any error for this name for this required field we will get this custom error message we will also understand inside this request class approach so first of all we need to create a request class to validate our form so let's say that this is the form what we have created and with this form we are going to use our request class but this time we will submit our form data into a different route. So back to web.php let's create a route something route let's say get and here we have let's say add a student which is going to open our myform.blade.php so inside this array Simply, we are going to use our student controller. So, a student controller, it's a class, and inside this class, we have a method to render this layout. So, what I will do if I comment the whole code, get rid of this request class from here, or let's say that just create a new method to understand from starting. So, public function, let's say add a student, and inside this simply we are going to return view and inside this my form dot dot php so here it's a method it is going to return this view file so i'm going to copy this method name go inside this web dot php and putting it here so if i back to browser and let's see that here add hyphen student and it is opening the form which contains name, email and the mobile number. Rest of, of all the details like the form attributes here we have the method type, action and the name attribute of each fields like name. Here we have the name, email and the mobile number. This time we are going to submit to a different route. 
so let's uh, simply submit hyphen data so we need to create this route with the post request type back to web.php let's route post and here we have the route as submit hyphen data it is going to use the student controller what we have created so a student controller which is a class and inside this class we need to create a method which is going to process our post request data so back to student controller let's say that public function submit data so this is the method we are going to call while submitting our form data if I copy the method name back to web.php and we need to specify here in the next so first of all let's check that actually we are getting inside this method or not so print a and simply here we have the request putting it here let's create the instance of request class and by the help of this request instance we are going to call all method so if I save all these changes back here reload this page and if we put any value click on submit now as we can see that we are getting our form data but when we don't want to submit any data click on submit without filling data also we can see that form has been submitted so this time to validate our form we are going to use request class so first of all we need to create a request class so that that class will validate this form so back to our terminal so to create any request class we have a separate artisan command so php artisan if i type simply help and let's make colon request pressing enter and as we can see that this is the command php artisan make request which is used to create a new form request class so here we need to provide the name of the class so how can we how actually we'll create simply php artisan make colon request alice is to student data this is the class name we have passed pressing enter we have created our request class back to editor press ctrl b to open our left sidebar go inside this app http and inside this we will see a folder called request inside this request folder we have the file what we have created via terminal this is our request class so by the help of this request class actually we are going to provide our form validation so inside this request class we have few methods like we have authorized methods rules methods and if needed we also we can create the messages method so to validate by using our request class first of all back to our student controller and go inside this submit data so instead of using this request class actually we are going to use our store student data request class so we need to import that so use store student data which is a request class and copy this class name go inside the submit data because this method is going to actually take all the posted data of our form so putting it here and this time now this req is an instance of this store student data request class back to this request class go inside this rules and inside this method inside this array we can put actually our form validation rules so what I will do simply go inside this form see all about the form attributes so here we have the name email and mobile back here let's say we have name we have email and next we have our mobile so in the same way we can put our form validation rules so let's say we want all about required attribute so what I will do copy paste and pasting it here so here we have successfully put if we save all these changes 
go inside this authorize method and make it as a true value and also in some cases we want that this request class should work when our request should be authorized. So in our case just we need to convert from false value to true value because we are not, not actually using all about our login paste concept only we are using for like form validation. So I am making from false to true back to our controller in the next go inside the submit data get rid of this print or or let's say simply I am commenting that and here REQ which is an instance of store student data and I am using validated method. If suppose when we have submitted our form without any value it will go inside this submit data method and it will use validated method. After using this validated method it will go inside this request class select all the rules what we have provided validate our form and if any error occurs it will return all the errors automatically inside this view file. So if I back to browser go here reload this page and I think that we have closed our development server so let's start one more time. So PHP artisan serve go and reload this page. So here let's say that we are not filling any data inside this but keep in mind we have used our request class to validate that and we have also added required attribute. So when we click on submit as we can see that we have all the errors like name field is required, email field is required and the mobile field is required and also we are getting all about the inline error. So we can say that in the last video what we had seen using this validate method also the same validated actually works and in the same way we can actually get access over all the errors what actually we got from the server. If I back to browser, let's pass some data here. So this is our dummy data. We are passing it here. This is some dummy mobile number. Click on submit. So now nothing is appearing. It means we have no error, but actually we want to collect our output. So back to student controller. And if I make uncomment of this line, this is only for the form validation. If there is no error then it will go after that line and print all the values what we are getting out from our form. So if we save back to browser and if I reload this and let's say submitting with the value and as we can see that what the value we have submitted successfully we are getting inside this output. Now let's say that one more time I am submitting without any value these are our predefined messages what system has generated but in some cases we want our like message customization so how it can be achieved inside our request class back to editor in case of validate simply we have used the second array for our customizable error messages for request class go inside this class and we need to create one more method inside this called public function messages and inside this we need to simply return array and let's say that we have called name this is our field name dot required means rule and we want something let's say our custom message as name is needed now if you save also in case of email address if you want email dot required let's say here email is needed save these changes only we have actually added a messages method back to browser reload this route and click on submit button now as you can see that this is our custom message what we have provided inside messages method in this case we have added simply a required form validation rule. If we have let's say mean length, here we have mean equals to 6. It means the minimum characters we want up to 6. So back to browser, reload this page and if we pass more than 6 characters actually minimum we want. 
So I am passing only two characters. Click on submit. So here we are getting the a message as the name must be at least six characters. But if we want to change this message, back to editor, go here, and let's say that name field name dot we need to write our form validation rule. So this is mean and let's say minimum length or minimum value should be greater than equal to 6 so minimum value characters should be greater than equal to 6 now if you save back to browser reload this page let's pass something dummy value which is of 3 characters click on submit and here is our custom message so successfully guys this is the second alternative way by the help of that actually we can validate our form in the previous video we had seen using validated means validate method and inside this video we had seen using validated method in the next video we will see the concept that how can we create manual validators by the help of that also we can validate our form request so inside this video session guys if you went out then please drop your comment i will give my reply as soon as possible so for this video session guys thank you for watching and have a great day